Shalom. Today we are going to begin a series of lessons on the Aleph Tav. I know you've had a lot of teaching on this already, and our goal here is to not only cover the fundamentals, but to go on beyond the fundamentals. There's many uh, insights that we can gain when we look at the use of uh, Aleph Tav in its different grammatical forms and its different meanings. In Re Revelation 1a, Yeshua says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And again in verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. So Alpha and Omega are Greek terms for the first and last letters of the alphabet. And we can easily apply this to the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which are Aleph and Tav. That's what we're looking at, the Aleph and the Tav. So it seems to represent something uh, important uh, as Yeshua used this terminology to identify himself. We're going to look into all the aspects of this. In Psalm 33.6, it is written, By the word of Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So when we look at the Aleph Tav, we can understand that it represents the whole Aleph Bet in Hebrew. We have similar phrases in English. We say from A to Z, meaning everything in between. Uh, we say from soup to nuts, which would refer to perhaps a meal we don't eat uh, nuts so much for dessert, but I guess at one time it was more popular. It's interesting that in um, Tanakh it talks about from Abel to Zechariah, and in English that speaks to us of A to Z, covering all the prophets. But in fact, in Hebrew, it goes uh, Hevel starts with He, and Zechariah starts with Zion. So I will leave you to figure out which uh, letter is between those. So Aleph Tav, A to Z, it represents all the letters and every word that's formed by the letters. So I'm going to tell you a classic Hebrew story about Moshe Mendel, who has to make a long trip by foot from one town to another. And he gets up early in the morning and he has business in the next town, and he's walking and walking. He gets to the town. It's already late in the afternoon. He's very tired. And he sits down on the bench, and he says, You know, it's really time for prayers. And he begins to pat his jacket pockets, and he realizes that he has forgotten his siddur. And he's not a learned man, and so he just covers his face with his hat, and he says, Oy, Rebono Shal Olam, O oh, Lord of the universe, you know that it is my desire to say my prayers to you, but I am not a learned man, and I have forgotten my siddur. And so, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to recite the Aleph Bet, and I will say all the letters one by one. And you, Rebono Shal Olam, Lord of the universe, you take the letters and you put them in the order for the words for the prayers. There are several acrostic scriptures in Tanakh, and here are some examples. Acrostic scriptures mean that um, the lines start line by line with each letter of the Aleph Bet. And this, in fact, gives us a mnemonic, a way to remember uh, the next line. In Isaiah 41.4, it is written, who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, Yahweh, the first and with the last, I am he. Yahweh identifies himself as the first and the last, as Yeshua does. Isaiah 44, 6. Thus saith Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And again in 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, I will do all my pleasure. 
And again in Isaiah 48.3, I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, and I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Continually showing the connection of Yahweh to the beginning and to the end. The connection of the Aleph to the Tav, and everything that is in between. Again in Isaiah 48.12, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, and I am also the last. And again in verse 16, Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord Yahweh and his Spirit hath sent me. The beginning and the end. So in fact, in Hebrew grammar, both biblical and modern Hebrew, the Aleph Tav is used as a direct object marker. And we're going to see the examples of this in the Hebrew. In Colossians 1.17, it is written, And he is before all things, that is speaking of Yeshua, and by him all things consist. In other words, when we attach the noun and the subject to the direct object, those words are preceded and joined together by this Aleph Tav all things hang together, the relationship of the, of the words hang together by the grammatical marker Aleph Tav. We see the Aleph Tav in, um, in this function in several ways. Usually it is attached to a preceding Vav, which means and, or it is hyphenated to the following direct object. Sometimes it is attached to a preposition. We're going to look at an example. It also appears with personal pronouns attached. We'll look at several examples. And then occasionally it appears by itself, standing alone. In the first example from Breshit 1.4, Genesis 1.4, Be'yar Elohim et ha'or, and he saw Elohim, what? The light. So we see that the uh, Aleph Tav there is hyphenated to the light, and it is a direct object. Elohim saw, what did he see? He saw the light. Kitov v'yavd Elohim ben ha'or ben ha'choshech. He saw that it was good, and Elohim divided between the light and between the dark. In this example, uh, we see some more hyphenation and also attached to the Vav from Bereshit 1.16, V'ya'as Elohim et shnei ha'me'orot ha'gadolim. And Elohim made, Aleph Tav, what did he make? The two great lights, et ha'me'or ha'gadol l'memshelat hayom. That is to say, he made, what did he make? The great light to rule the day, the et ha'me'or ha'katan l'memshelat halayla, and also, what did he make? The small light to rule the night, the et hakochavim. What else did he make? And the stars. So all of these Aleph Tavs show us a direct object. He made two lights. He made the great light. He made the small light. He made the stars. The Aleph Tav is never translated in English. It just shows the direct object. From this example in Bereshit 19, 24, uh, uh, in the incident of Sodom and Gomorrah, we see that the Aleph Tav is attached to the preposition Mem, which means from. Yahweh Himtir al Stom vi al Amora. And Yahweh rained down on Sodom and on Gomorrah, gafrit ve'esh, uh, sulfur and fire, brimstone and fire, me'et, from. I cannot tell you why the et is there. It doesn't have to be there. But in this case, as it is written, from, from where? From Yahweh, from the heavens, min hashamayim. Now we're going to look at two examples where the Aleph Tav is actually attached to 
the personal pronoun, and that person will be the direct object. Uh, first, from Deuteronomy 21:22, "Vechi yehiyeh chet," and it will be for the man of sin, mishpat mavet, a judgment of death, vehumat, and he shall be killed, vitalita oto al es, and you will hang him. So we see the Aleph Tav, the Vav at the end, the O. If you have followed any of the uh, teachings about the uses of the letters, we know that the Vav at the end, that O ending, is for him. Uh, you will hang him, Al Etz, on a tree. So who are you hanging? Him, O To. There's no other way to say him. There's no other way to use that third person, masculine singular. You can't just have uh, a, a preposition. It doesn't take a preposition. It takes this Aleph Tav marker as a direct object marker. You will hang who? You will hang him. In the second example from Deuteronomy 20, verse 4, Ki Yahweh Elohechem haholech imachem. Because Yahweh, your God, who is going with you, lahilachem lachem im oivechem, to fight uh, really on your behalf with your enemies, lahoshia et chem, to save. You know this this verb, hoshia Yeshua, to save et chem, all y'all. Okay, so that kaf mem sofid at the end. That is the second person plural uh, ending. It is uh, declines this Aleph Tav to mean to save all y'all. It is the direct object. Who is he saving? He is saving all y'all. Next time we'll go further into looking into these things, all the uses and how Aleph Tav is used as the grammatical marker and also with other words that actually have meaning. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayam Ahashamayam, keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.